Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and I just loaded the skid loader up. I gotta get it chained down and get over to Paul's house. He has a sawdust pile that is in the running to be the eighth wonder of the world. You can actually see it from space. So we're gonna see if we can relocate that and maybe actually put it to use with one of his tractors and, and not just dispose of it. Anyway, better get out there and get started. I'm here to remove that pile of sawdust. And it probably doesn't look that bad, but about 30 feet from me, there's a drop off that drops six or eight feet to establish what the depth is supposed to be. And then it slopes up on each side. So Paul is estimating that out in the middle there, the sawdust might be eight foot or 10 foot deep. And it's a really long run like that. It's been rainy obviously it's all gonna be wet and what's under it will be composted and wet because it's been piling up for years so I got to get a good strategy and we're gonna try to clean this out and spread it across his fields so should be interesting I tell you what I came around and saw it from this side it is a different looking story here's where we're gonna load it We got the Kate's 585 XL and an old New Holland spreader. And I'm gonna make a pile and then I'm gonna also load that spreader and he's gonna take it around his fields. This is so much deeper than I thought it would. And it's going to be a mud hole. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get a lot accomplished here. So this pile of sawdust is soaking wet and there's a big mud spot right in front of it. And I started off thinking I was really going to have a problem with getting the machine stuck. If you look at it right now, I'm sinking way down in and as I try to back out here, I'm halfway up my tracks on the first pass. And my thought process is that I'm gonna need to make 500 passes into this pile. And if I'm getting sinking on the first pass, I'm gonna have a problem. Turns out that wasn't the case. At this point, I'm trying to find a way to remove the sawdust without getting in that center mud hole any more than necessary. But Paul comes down and explains to me that that mud hole is just a top layer that's actually sawdust that's ran down and rotted. All of this is built on really rocky ground and basically you couldn't sink or get stuck if you tried. And once I figured that out, it goes a lot smoother. Paul hired me to work on removing this sawdust for two days. And when I looked at the pile from the other end, 
I thought that was no problem at all. I would easily get all this removed, but I wasn't grasping how enormous this pile really is. This is basically 10 years of them running a sawmill full time and all of this is the sawdust and it literally is eight feet deep and where you see me driving now i'm still not down to ground level Up to this point, I've been backing each scoop of sawdust all the way out to the end of the buildings, and we realized pretty quickly that was a waste of time. So Paul started backing the manure spreader all the way down to where I'm working, at least as much as he could. That saved us a lot of time, although he has a two-wheel drive tractor, and he was making some pretty big ruts. So I did kind of have to go through and fill those ruts in so he could continue to back down there. This is also the point when he told me I was going to have to go straight down the middle because it's not likely we can remove every bit of sawdust, but he wants a path through the middle from one end all the way to the other. While Paul was out spreading the sawdust, I did still have to take all of this material out just so I could keep working. So I was still driving about half of the material all the way to the end of the buildings, but it was the most effective routine we could figure out. Now, it might seem like it would make more sense to turn around after scooping it up and drive forward, but one of the first things I learned is that you're actually more time effective driving backward in most cases than turning at each end. I keep talking about Paul with the assumption that all you guys know who he is, but if you're new to the channel, my friend Paul Case is a farmer who also runs a sawmill operation and these buildings that he runs his sawmill in are obviously chicken or turkey barns and that's kind of what he started off doing but once that wasn't as profitable anymore and he turned to sawmilling he's found plenty of other uses for the buildings paul published a video on his youtube channel with some pretty heavy-handed critiques of my loading skills and he asked the viewers to rate it. So I'll put a link to that in the video description. But you guys can go on there and tell him that I'm obviously really good on that skid loader. So Paul, I don't know if this is teamwork. I keep fixing ruts here, and then he makes more, and then I fix them again. So what kind of team is this? And he started saying something about, well, I just have a two-wheel drive tractor. Hey, there's no I in team, Paul. Now, if you've got any thought in your mind about clicking off of this video and not watching the rest of it, you should at least 
click to the end and see what we're able to accomplish with this pile. And Paul gives one of his legendary stories that he's uh, so well known for. So make sure to check that out at the end. He hired me to work on this for two days and told me he didn't think there was any way we could finish it in two days. And I would have gladly done a third day and I think Paul would have been okay with that too. But the problem is we had three days of rain lined up afterwards. So we may revisit this in the future, but I'm not sure. Here's more of a close-up on those loading skills. So I definitely, I'm spilling a little bit of sawdust when I'm loading, and I can see it pretty clearly in Paul's video. So I'll give myself about a B- minus on that. That don't go there. Judging from the pile and the way it tapers down, I'd say we started the day where the camera's at. And we have made a lot of progress. Got a late start today because of my daughter having a dentist appointment that I didn't know about. But hopefully by tomorrow, we can have all this cleared out of here. So I'll be right back. We're out here for day two. Paul is getting his tractor warmed up and ready to go. If you guys have not already, all my regular viewers know who Paul is. Paul Case Farms on YouTube. We make videos together quite a bit. Awesome guy, funny guy. 
go subscribe to his channel or go look at it. So, yesterday, yesterday I almost got poked through where I can drive right up the center, which works out perfectly because he wants to take start taking the sawdust out to pastures on this side of his property and I think even across the road. So he's going to want to start coming in and out from this side. So it's convenient that I can drive all the way through the middle if I want to pick up from that side and bring it around or whatever works. Hey, don't you have anything better to do than drive around on this tractor all day? Found anything yet lately? This is what you do when your shocks get wore out. You'll need to know that. That's that's I like that. Probably multi purpose board, too. Yeah, you can whack somebody with it if they get close enough. So, the idea here is you're gonna back down here every time, like we were doing yesterday. Yep, you might want to take those two little sprouts down, and I think you can load me right here on the flat, maybe. Okay, uh -huh. sounds like a winner. So, it might take me. 10 minutes to push get, my way through so I can come here. from this side yep. but we're really close to it it's a little steeper on that side and it's been years but I was able once upon a time to drive around the pile on the south side but it gets up close to that building and it's steep now when you're when you're taking this out to spread it do you want me to make a pile up here or back out where we were or? probably back out where we were I'm, I'm going to be good and sick of this. Apparently, I just ordered uh, 40 yards of mushroom compost to spread on one of my hay fields with this. And my uh, seat cushion's getting wore out. I, yeah. Well, I feel like this spreader's probably paying for itself. You both, think it's already done that? Both sides of my seat cushion. The part that's on me and the part that's on the <laughs> tractor. <laughs> well, maybe you ought to thicken one of them up. <laughs> <laughs> the one's already thick enough, don't you think? Yeah. <clears throat> Well, let me see if I can get turned around and, and get up here. All this brush that's growing up on the sides down at this end is not something that Paul wanted mulched and spread with the sawdust. 
So for right now, I'm just clearing it out of the way so I can get to the sawdust further down. Hey, you got any pig jokes today? I do have a story for you. Here we go. There was a guy from uh, Texas came up and was visiting a rancher friend of his in Missouri. And they was driving around out in the country and there was uh, a uh, rabbit run across the road. And the Texan said, what is that? And the Missourian said, well, that, that's a rabbit. Don't you have rabbits in Texas? Oh, Lord, we got rabbits, but they're like three times that big. And they go on up a little farther, and a white-tailed buck jumps across the road in front of them. And the Texan says, what was that? And the Missourian says, well, that was a white-tailed buck. That He was a prize one. He said, well, we've got white-tailed buck in Texas, but good grief, ours is like three times that big. And they go on up, and one of them great big turtles, the kind that you'd think you could make a hat out of his shell, if he died, was crossing the road up in front of him, and the Texan said, what is that? And the Missourian said, don't you have ticks in Texas? We are done for the day, and by extension, we're done for the week because it's going to rain the next two days. So we're definitely not getting back out here. I don't know if he'll have me back next week to finish this or if he's going to leave it like this for a long time. I think he'd like to get it done, but I think he had like 10 years of sawdust piled up here. It's crazy to look at what's left, but wait till you see what I pulled out down there. So I'm pretty happy with the progress. I put 11 hours on the skid loader in two days and there was not a lot of messing around. So I was probably here 12 hours and ran the loader 11 hours. And almost every bit of that, he was also running the tractor and the manure spreader. And he's put this all across his acreage. Now I'm happy with it, but the real question is, is Paul happy with it because he's paying me to do this. Although I will say, I think I gave him a pretty darn good rate, which I like to do if I can. So about half of everything I scooped out from up there got spread on this field. And here's the other half of what I took out. I've been kind of telling the the audience here what a smashing success this was. 
Hmm. But since you're paying the freight and this is your piece of land, how you feel about it? Nobody got hurt. <laughs> I think I don't know that there's any value to spreading that out on the ground. I mean, I've done it before and not realized any uh, extra benefit, but I'm rid of it. And so this is almost like a salvage operation. <laughs> there's less of that than there used to was. Yeah, there's less of it's visible. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to call that a glowing endorsement. I don't know how it sounded to you guys. Well, I think this was a lot of fun. Thanks for paying me to work out here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, appreciate you guys watching. I'll put links on the screen to more of our videos. We'll see you next time. Later.